Hey, what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you how to quickly make a chicken shawarma sandwich at home that is actually a taco. It has all the payoff of the traditional street cart shawarma that you're familiar with, but it's a little bit lighter and it's optimized to be made by you at home on a Wednesday. This is weeknighting. To get started, I'm gonna grab two pounds two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. These thighs are looking cleaned up and ready to go, but if you have some chicken thighs that look like these ones, for example, I would definitely recommend cutting out any of this excessive chicken fat. Now to get this chicken moving, I'm gonna throw it into a very brief, but very flavorful yogurt-based marinade. To make that marinade into a medium bowl goes 200 grams of Greek yogurt, 20 grams of lemon juice, or about half of a large lemon juice, 10 grams of garlic powder, roughly one gram or two teaspoons of dry thyme, five grams of ground cumin, one gram or two teaspoons of dry dried oregano, two grams of coriander, five grams of garam masala, one gram of black pepper, and 20 grams of salt. From here, the chicken thighs are gonna go into the bowl, and now I'm just gonna toss everything until the chicken is well coated with yogurt, and the spices and herbs have had a chance to get evenly distributed throughout this mixture. That looks good. Now I'm gonna throw a lid on these thighs and let them marinate in the fridge while I get the rest of my taco prep sorted out. For me, the ultimate condiment for a charred chicken taco like this one is a garlicky, lemony, creamy, tahini sauce. To make it into a high sided container goes 150 grams of tahini. Note how loose this tahini looks. That is preferable in my opinion because generally tahini that is super thick is pretty bitter. Up next is 30 grams of lemon juice and then 100 to 120 grams of water depending on how thick your tahini is and then two grams of salt and one chunky garlic clove that I'm going to slice real quick so that it breaks down when I puree it. Next in goes my immersion blender and I'm going to give everything a spin here for let's say 10 to 15 seconds or until all that garlic is well broken down and the tahini sauce is thickened up just a little bit. The finished sauce should be nice and saucy like this and if yours is looking a little bit thick don't hesitate to add more water or lemon juice and if it's thin add more tahini. Now to keep things pro I'm going to scoot this over into a little squiz bottle real quick that way I can achieve the saucing precision I desire. That's very important to me and the next little bit of prep here is going to be to make some tomato cucumber pico de gallo. To make this pico I'm going to start with 150 grams or roughly two small diced tomatoes. These little vines ripened tomatoes seem to work pretty well for me when there's no good seasonal tomatoes to be found and to get them into a nice dice that eats properly in a pico de gallo I'm going to use my serrated knife. A serrated requires almost no downward pressure to cut the tomato so it doesn't crush it during the cut. But if you're thinking hey Bri what about that little butthole you left on top of that tomato? Personally I think it's a lot easier to remove the core during the dice part rather than at the beginning with some awkward paring knife maneuver. Once I've got these two smallish tomatoes diced I'm going to peek to see if there's any mealy white bits of core left in the mix. There's one, get that out of there. Now, once we've got diced tomatoes sorted out, I'm gonna top that with 125 to 150 grams of diced cucumbers. I usually keep these cute little baby cucumbers in my fridge for salads. I really like them, but any cucumber will work. Just keep in mind that you might have to peel the large ones. To get a nice dice on a cucumber like this, I've halved it, then halved the halves. Next, I'm gonna come back and zip out the seeds. That's optional if you don't wanna do that, no biggie. Then I'm gonna have it one more time, and from there, I'm gonna come back and give it a proper half inch dice. That looks really good. On top of that comes 10 grams or about a quarter bunch of parsley that I've chopped finely and then three grams of salt. Clearly this container is not the right size to stir this. So I'll flip this into something appropriate, give it a stir. And there we go. A nice light weeknight pico thing. It's fresh, it's crunchy, and it bridges that gap between fresh Mexican and Middle Eastern food. Or here's an idea. Don't make the pico de gallo and just buy it from the grocery store. This stuff is more than passable for a weeknight taco in my opinion. And it gets you most of the way to where you wanna be. One last bit of prep here that isn't really prep, but more pantry building is to make pickled peppers. I usually have a quart of these homemade pickled banana peppers in my fridge and I'm gonna be using them on the taco. So for fun, I'm gonna share the very simple process for making them so you guys have it. This is a banana pepper. It's got pretty mild heat, but amazing pepper aroma. And I'm just gonna cut six to seven of them into large chunky rings like this. And I'll usually stop cutting the pepper when I get to the meaty CD part at the top. Once I've got about a whole quart of these sliced, I'm gonna bring my brine to a boil in a saucepan. That's 400 grams of water, 400 grams of white distilled vinegar, 80 grams of sugar, and eight grams of salt. I'll bring that brine up to a boil, and once it's rolling, I'm gonna add in that quart of chopped peppers. From there, I'm gonna give everything a poke to make sure that the peppers are fully submerged in the brine, and then I'm gonna turn off the heat. As these peppers cool, they're gonna cook just a little bit and get infused with all that acidity. By tomorrow or the day after, you're gonna have a very useful, little bit spicy, crunchy, sweet, and sour pickle to add to salads or sandwiches or whatever you want to taste good.
Okay, let's cook this shawarma. First off, I'm gonna grab a half sheet tray and line that with two large sheets of foil. I'm gonna be broiling these thighs pretty hard under the broiler and this foil is gonna save me some pretty brutal cleanup later on. Speaking of the broiler, I'm gonna preheat mine to its highest setting, then grab my chicken out of the fridge. This stuff's been marinating for roughly 20 minutes and I'd say that's the minimum if you want the yogurt to properly stick to the chicken while it's cooking, but I've gone up to eight hours with this stuff if you wanna make it ahead in the morning time and then cook it after work. Maybe just leave out a touch of salt if you're gonna marinate it that long. Once these thighs are transferred over to the foil, I'm gonna check on my broiler to make sure that it's fully hot and ready to rip. That looks great. Now, one last thing before we cook this chicken is to make sure that the grate in the oven is right under the broiler. From here, I'm gonna load these chicken thighs into the oven and cook them under high heat for 10 to 12 minutes or until that chicken's taken on a little bit of char. While those cook, I'm gonna grab a medium nonstick pan to preheat my tortillas and throw that down over medium heat. I've got a tortilla holder here to hold on to the heated tortillas. I really cannot recommend you guys getting one of these enough. Unheated tortillas really bum me out in a meaningful way and I just simply won't abide them in my house. For these tacos, I'm going with a six inch flour tortilla because it's a pretty close relative of whatever Middle Eastern flatbread you might see on the street wrapping a chicken shawarma usually. They're a little bit lighter though, in my opinion, and probably a little bit more widely available to most home cooks. Back under the broiler, it's been about 10 minutes and this chicken is looking very good. It's nicely charred, but not burnt, and now it's time to flip. From here, I'm gonna cook this on the back side for another 10 to 12 minutes under the broiler or until we've got the same color on that side. After 20 minutes under the broiler, it's time to take these out and take a look. I know these are gonna be very well cooked at this point, but I'll throw a thermometer in there just to double check. And anything over 165F, 74C is good. These thighs are done. You guys, for chicken that was cooked indoors, this stuff has a very rustico vibe, almost like it was cooked over a hot charcoal. And for 30 minutes of work, I think you'd be hard pressed to make a piece of chicken that tastes better than this. I hope you throw it into your weeknight rotation. Now, to get this chicken ready for the taco, I'm gonna run my knife through through it, slicing it pretty thin. This move kind of replicates the thickness of chicken when it's shaved off of the spit. And when you cut chicken into smaller pieces like this, the chicken won't be accidentally pulled out of the taco during a big dog bite, which I really hate. Now I'm gonna chop the other five chicken thighs the same way by slicing them thin, turning 90 degrees and giving it one more chop. Once that chicken is all chopped up, I'm gonna slide it over into my tortilla pan to keep it warm while I build some tacos. First thing down is a warm, floppy flour tortilla. Then in goes two to three ounces of chopped chicken. On top of that goes a few spoonfuls of our cucumber tomato pico de gallo, which is very fresh, very crunchy. And then behind that, three to four pieces of sweet pickled banana peppers that we made earlier, and then a few slices of salty garlicky dill pickles. To sauce this thing, I'm going to add a few spoonfuls of sambal chili sauce to bring some heat, but sriracha would also be a good alternative. Then I'm going to hit this with a long squirt of tahini sauce to moisten the whole thing up. And to finish this, I'm going to hit it with a heavy dose of shredded lettuce. That cold Cold, wet crunch here really seals the deal. And again, bridges that gap between fresh Mex and the Middle East. Look, I know a taco is not the authentic way to serve chicken shawarma, but for me, that's not really the goal. When it comes down to it, this taco tastes very good anyone can make it, and it hits in a very similar way to the traditional chicken shawarma sandwich. This is just fun food, full stop, and I hope you guys make it on a weeknight sometime soon. Let's eat this thing.